In this video, we are going to learn how to use a while loop to validate input. The goal in this is to identify if the value the user entered is a value that we are expecting. So here I've got just a program. This is just a standard program that gathers a score from a user. So it just asks the user for a score, it gets that, and it just prints the score to the screen. So you can imagine that there are lots of things you could do with an exam score, um, and we're not doing that right now, we're just printing it out. We'll save doing something useful with it for a future video. Right now we're just simply gathering, but what we want to do is verify that the score is between 0 and 100. Now if we run this program right now, and we enter a score of 74, it says you enter 74. That's what we would expect. That's something we expected it to be. But if they did something wrong, like entered 174, it just simply moves on. The score you entered was 174. What we want is a red flag to say, oops, this is not in the right range. We can't accept this score. The scores really need to be between 0 and 100. So a while loop is an ideal tool for doing this because it allows us to loop until we get a value that is in the correct range. So we're going to put a while loop in here. It's going to come after we get the score. We want to be able to ask a question about it. And what we want to know is we want to create a loop where the condition is true when there's a problem with the input. Okay, so if something goes wrong, we want to go inside this loop. And it's false, the condition is false when the input is in the correct range. Okay, so we want to go in the loop when there's a problem, and we want the, to not go in the loop when it's correct, when everything's fine. So while, now how do we write a condition that identifies there's a problem? Well, we want score to be between 0 and 100. So there's a problem when score is less than 0. There's also a problem when score is greater than 100. All right, so we have two problems that we can consider. And now we have to decide how to put these together, whether to put them together with an or or an and. Well, it's not possible to have a value that is less than 100 and greater than, or less than 0 and greater than 100. But we can have a value that is less than 0 or greater than 100. So we for sure want an or there. And remember the things that are important about a loop. We establish the condition that does what we want. And then first we need to figure out how to start the loop. So we need to make sure we have a valid value for this condition to test when we start the loop. So we're testing for the value of score. So we look, and sure enough, here we're getting a value for score. And that happens before the loop. So this is really where we're priming the loop, right? where we get the value to be able to test it. And the next thing we want to do is inside the loop, we want to do the work. Now the work of an input validation loop is to let the user know that there's been a problem. So we're simply going to say that value is not allowed, right? And we can give them more information. The score must be between 0 and 100. All right, so that was what we needed to do, is we needed to give them information about that there was something wrong. That's the work of an input validation loop. And then, as always, with the while loop, we need to make sure to provide a way to stop. All right, so how are we going to stop this loop? Well, the only way we can stop it is if score gets in the correct range. So what we need to do is we need to get a new value for score. So we're going to let the user try again. We're going to write an input prompt. Let's give them a little bit of a clue right here in the input prompt. Since the first one didn't work, we'll just be a little bit more detailed on this one. So there's our input prompt, and we'll get the value for score. And there we've provided a way to stop the loop. So we've done all the things we needed to do with the loop. Give it a condition that is true when we want to go inside the loop and false when we want to stop. 
We made sure we could start the loop well by giving it, getting a value for that looping variable before we got there. Once we're inside the loop, we want to do the work and then provide a way to stop the loop. So we've done all those important things that you need to do for any while loop. And let's go ahead and run this and see how it works. So when the user enters a score of 74 like we did before, it works exactly the same. Because it got to that condition, they entered 74. It tested, is 74 less than 0? Nope. Is 74 greater than 0? Nope. It's not that or that, so this condition was false. It entirely skipped everything inside that while loop. Didn't do it at all. This is really common for an input validation loop. We truly expect the user to get it right most of the time. So it is common that this loop is never executed, and that's what we expect. And then, so it drops outside the loop and it simply does that C out statement. Now let's look and see what happens when there is an error. So the user does a typo, they enter the 174, what happens? It comes up and it says, oh, that value is not allowed. The score must be between 0 and 100. And it gives us a chance to enter the score again. So here the user goes, oh, I see what I did wrong. I really meant to hit 74, and now that value is entered and everything is correct. Notice that this time it went through the loop one time, but it is possible that you can go through the loop over and over again. So the user might enter 174 and then say, oh, maybe I'll enter number two, negative 2, maybe I'll enter 765. Notice as long as they're willing to sit and enter incorrect values or values that are outside of the allowed range, um, the loop will continue to work. And you'll stay in that loop until finally the user enters a value that is in the correct range.